and these two teammates, they're on the same schedule as far as their tires. Both of them pitted the same time while ago, 4-4 four, four tires, but Gordon, 24, gets that good run on the high side off turn two. But look at Dale Jarrett in the 88 car. We talked about Scott Riggs, but how about DJ in the 88 car? He was way back in the pack, little strategy. Now he's up there in the fourth spot. It's got to be making a Wilbur pretty happy right now. Billy Wilbur and the new crew chief. These two Hendrick kids are going to wear these fellas out. Vickers wants the lead, and Kyle Busch is about to knock on the door of fourth place. They have got some fast race cars, and they're, they're using them up. Contact, Rusty Wallace, Casey Kane for 14th, and Bobby Labonte you're riding with right in the middle of it. Labonte carrying the FedEx colors today because Jason Leffler did not qualify his FedEx car for the race, so Joe Gibbs Racing talked to Labonte's sponsor, Interstate Batteries, which graciously allowed the sponsorship to move for tonight's event. But now Casey Kane in the nine, he has a little fresher tire than these guys, but he had to get out of the throttle right there coming off turn two, it looked like. Vicker said it. He didn't get out of the throttle. No, Ron Vicker just blew by Jeff Gordon. He put the Linda Ronstadt on him. Blew by you. But he'd been working on him for about five or six laps. <laughs> Let's see what happened with Casey Kane here. Now watch the number nine on this replay. Car looks just a little unstable right now. That's Rusty Wallace on the outside. Gets to Wiglin. It's just it doesn't it doesn't look like much on TV, but enough to get him up there and you can't get off that car on the outside of you until you hit him. Here's what Bobby Lavani saw of that. You know what, Mike, you can wreck every race, but when you see an opening, it doesn't matter, you go for it. And you heard from Labonte's on board, he had his foot flat on the floor and took advantage of Kane's loss of momentum. Labonte moving up to 15th, dropping Kane to 16th. Ricky Rudd is still in the chase. He has led this race under green, and that's the first time he has led since Kansas last October. The Wood Brothers have had such success here. At Lowe's Motor Speedway, David Pearson with all those poles, 11 poles in a row, and some of those led to wins as well. Martin Truex right behind Rudd has had an up and down night, Steve. Mike, remember a, a while back, Martin Truex Jr. brought out the first caution on lap five when he hit the wall. He's made his way back inside the top ten, running tenth right now. You see him battling. He just told crew chief Kevin Mannion his car will not turn right now. It just will not turn. And, that, and that's what happens. He tells them that, so they make a little adjustment on the next stop, then it'll be way too loose, and he can't drive it. Kyle Busch trying to win his third major race here in the space of two weeks. He's in fourth place. Dick Burton. If he's going to win this race, that engine has to hold together, and there is grave concern about the condition of the engine. He just now said him. He just now said everything is good, but a few laps ago, he said the motor is going away. And I'll tell you what, this crew sprang to action when they heard that scary moment. It, it's hard to watch. We go through on our lap three. <laughs> it's hard to tell from the grandstand, but each race car engine has a certain harmonic to it. And Daryl, don't you expect to hear the same pitch, the same sound? lap after lap. Yeah, and, and as a driver, that's what you do. You don't look at the tack. You don't watch the gauges. you got to concentrate on your driving, but you do listen to every sound that car makes. You can hear it that time through turn one and two. It's definitely going sour. We still have 117 laps to go. That's going to be a tall order for that motor. It could be something as simple as a broken header, and a broken header will cause you to think something's wrong with the engine. Remember, earlier in the race, 
he had an ignition issue. He was swapping back and forth between the boxes. So I just wonder if this is related to that possibility. And electrical problems are so hard to trace. Could be ignition, could be alternator, could be battery. You know what those gauges are doing? Could be so many things. I'm telling you, I think it's a broken header. Just watching the car run and listening to it, it makes me think it's got a cracked header. But it's definitely hurting the performance because most of our leaders are running 30, 30 or quicker. His last lap was 37. Whatever it is, getting worse. Yeah, he's going to lose the position to Greg Biffle in the 16 car. This is a battle for fifth right now. Jeff, what do you think it is? From down here inside the hotel when the five car comes by, guys, it sounds like it's got a broken power swing. It's getting worse each time it comes by. You can hear it through the exhaust of the car. It doesn't sound good. Yeah, well, Jeff, what I was basing it off, what he did just there, he's so fast through the corner, but it is laboring at the end of the straightaway. But, Darrell, a lot of times when you lose a cylinder, you can be faster through the corners because you're on the throttle more because you're not carrying as much speed into the corner. Well, we know Greg Biffle, he, he's driving hard as he can. He can't get around him. Guys, the one thing is we take a look at the, they're talking about maybe what's wrong with the car. But what I do want to wonder about is how hard he ran early on and whether they've used that car too much. And Ricky Rudd just told crew chief Pat back this way. I think we've just blown up. He said the engine had been fluttering. He said they're definitely on seven cylinders right now. And they're on the verge of blowing up. Well, here we are. How far we got to go, Larry? Well, we got 113 laps to go. So we, we still, we, we've got a ways to go. And normally it's in those last 100 miles. And you can see right there the RPMs on Ricky Rudd. You can see the miles per hour. You can see cars blowing by. No question, it's in trouble. And these engines have to last another 170 miles tonight. Plus, don't forget, these they got to run 600 miles tonight. They ran all the practice and qualifying with this engine in a car in trouble. Spin over here, front stretch, Let's yellow right down, here. display pop. Dave Blaney bringing out the caution flag. This is the 17th one tonight, and it comes at lap 288. So 111 laps to go. That's 166 miles left to run. And one thing we know, everybody's got the same gear. So it's not like one guy is turning more RPM than another guy. Uh, the same gear, they're all turning pretty much the same RPM. The all-time record caution flags in any Nextel Cup race, 20. It's happened uh, two or three times at Bristol Motor Speedway. And you said we still have 170 miles to go. Wish I hadn't said that, <laughs> but it's true. Pour me another cup of coffee. High test. This will be a quickie yellow, which basically means anyone that wants to pit can pit this time. You do not have to wait to the lap down cars, which is a lap after the leaders. And it's been about 40 laps since a lot of these cars came to pit road. I anticipate pit road probably will be pretty busy when they open it. In the garage already, Michael Waltrip, Matt Kenseth, and Terry Labonte taken out in a crash caused by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Sterling Marlin, Johnny Sauter, Mike Skinner, Jimmy Spencer, Kurt Busch. All those cars are out of this race. Here's Dick. Well, Dale Jarrett's crew is on the wall. They are poised and ready to go into the action. Uh, Jarrett said that he can't think of anything that they could do to this car to make it better. There was some discussion from Billy Wilbert, his new crew chief, about taking two tires. DJ said he wanted four, so he's going to get four. Driver makes that decision around car 88. Matty. The first 